Assalamu alaikum. My name is Osa Fatma and I am 19 years old and I live in East London. And I'm a Hausa student and I have studied there since 2017. We have grown up listening to the name of Imam Hussain since we were children and we've always gone through his majalis and always known what his sacrifice was and how he sacrificed himself for us and for the name of God. His um, name is just it's so different because for all of the Ahl Bayt and the Prophet himself, Imam Hussein was a very special being. We always hear the stories of him, of his miracles and his his different things that he's for example the the angel Fitrus and his the wings and it's just all so overwhelming and when you listen to everything when since you're a child it comes back to you so connecting that growing up you connect Imam Hussain with your life and you connect him with everything and you just come out of all the pain and all the suffering that you go through and you just remember his suffering. When I was young, I think my parents play a massive role in taking me to all of these Azadaris and all of this because there's a lot of children who I know didn't really attend the Majalis and they only came for 9th or 10th Muharram rather attending the whole of the 10 days of Majalis. I think that just gave me more love and more knowing about Imam Hussein because I attended those majalis since I was very young and I've always listened to his majalis and his sayings and everything. Everything about him just makes you fall in love with him even more. Growing up I knew that people visited Imam Hussein's grave and went to Karbala and I wanted to do the same but I couldn't because I was very young and whenever I asked my parents and they said yes soon inshallah whenever whenever the imam calls us i think that's the main everybody whenever you think of that whenever the imam calls you there's a quote by imam bakr al-islam which says um, visit the grave of imam hussein and you won't you, so you don't feel a stranger in heaven and that just it just it just gives you that hope that what if i'm if i go to heaven and I'm there and I haven't visited Imam Hussein's grave in all my lifetime. It just brings you down because it's heaven on earth. And it's just, we hear so many hadith and so many sayings from the Prophet and the Imams of the importance of the ziyarat of Imam Hussein. And I think we should always try our hardest to get to Karbala however we can. Planning for the ziyarat of Imam Hussein you think you can do so much and I remember I when my first yarat was in 2016 and that was the first of anything I was 16 years old and I was just so happy and relieved that I was actually going to visit Imam Hussein and I remember it was Arbaeen and it was the best ever feeling that I could ever felt that time I was so happy and I started looking at the different types of Amal I could do, different things, preparations for going before Ziyarat, getting there, printed out loads of du'as and surahs and Ziyarat and everything and fasted three days. It was so, so much, the planning was so much. But once you, once I got there, I didn't, I had this whole bundle of books and whole massive pile of papers and I didn't ever use that because I just used that one Mufat al Jannah which helped me through the Zarat of Imam Hussain. Because when you get there, you don't need anything. I think you just, you just have this connection with him. I think everybody has a different, different connection with Imam Hussain. And whatever you prepare, it doesn't matter because there's people who want to go to the walk and there's different preparation for that. And people have, oh, they, they look for the comfy shoes and then they look for the, the clothes and whatever. 
and the backpacks and whatever they need to find and look for. But once you get there, none of this matters. It just, and once you start walking, you see around yourself so many people. There's people with no shoes, there's people with ripped shoes. There's so many different things that happen there. There was no specific plan to when to go to the Ziyarat al and actually it just happened. It w I remember one day my mom told me, I have enough money to actually take us to the Ziyarat of Imam Hussain. And I was really, really happy. But she said, it, it's still not finalized yet, but I'm still trying. So she told me that she was, she was trying her best to get some, arrange something for us to be there. Um, I didn't know that I was going till last minute. We, we planned everything last minute. I think it was three or four days before leaving, we found out that we were actually going. And what it just, you know, because everybody has these stories, oh, we're going Arbaeen this year, we're going to the art of Imam Hussain, and oh, you should come, you should come. We, ho we hear all of this, these stories from people and whatever their experiences. And I think that just makes us want to visit Imam Hussein even more and more. And I think I remember I, it was maybe 24th or 25th of Muharram and it was the Shahadat of Imam Zainul Abideen. And I was just sitting and I was just, just sitting under the alam and I was just crying and praying that maybe I could just visit Imam Hussein. There was this, this pain inside of me that I just kept crying and crying and wishing that I was would be able to go this to this ziyarat this year. The day finally arrived when we were actually leaving for for Iraq, and the excitement was so much. And there was excitement, and there was this this hope of just being there, and you know, this just going to Imam Hussein, and it was so much happiness and sadness at the same time because it was Arbaeen and you were f feeling for his loss and what he went through but being there itself was the way why you were happy and everything. We went to Heathrow Airport and we landed in Baghdad. We then travelled to from Baghdad to Gadmain and we spent one night and one whole day in Gadmain. So my first ever shrine that I visited was Imam Musa Qadim salam. I remember it was the most painful and most heartbreaking experience. Once we entered Qadimain and you, the hotel is right there and once you get out of the hotel and you just turn left, there is in front of you the Haram and when you see it, the, the tears just come and it's just so heartbreaking because you remember his suffering and what he went through. After Qadimain, we travelled to Najaf and that's where the walk began. I wasn't ready for the walk. Uh, I remember I was really, really nervous. Um, I was planning of what to wear, what to, what to take with me and what I needed in the way and whatever. We packed a bag and left from Najaf and it was a three long, three days long journey and I remember going to, on in the way, just different, different things you can see. Starting from Najaf, we started off and once we got to, I remember 150 poles, I think it was. That's when we stopped and we just sat down for a bit and you just saw the people. There was water being handed out, there was dates and there was food. There was so much food everywhere, like there was so many people during the walk and none of them were hungry none of them were thirsty and that was the most amazing thing because it's such a unbelievable thing because you think maybe there's not enough food or you might run out but no it was nothing like that and it was we just got to 150 pole and we carried on walking and once we got to the end of the walk tired and blisters and everything the blisters were not even on your mind because you think of just just getting there so once we got to the last last pole 
I remember you just wanted to, I just wanted to run. I just, I thought if I could run and I could get there quicker, I wanted to leave everybody else behind because I just wanted to be there and it was just getting. So once we reached the bridge, I think there was a bridge, I just, there was this sadness and I saw, I don't know mum saying the dome, the dome, it was the most heartbreaking thing ever because you see it and you're like, am I actually here? Am I capable of being here? And I am his Zayar and Zawar and I'm there. And that was the most heartbreaking moment. And I remember the tears kept flowing and flowing and flowing and they didn't stop. We took the long route towards Imam Hussein. So first we went to Hazrat Abbas alayhi salam. We went to his Zari first. We thought maybe we could ask permission to get to his brother. So we went to him first, asked permission, went there. When I got entered the Haram of Hazrat Abbas, it was a different feeling, a different one. I think it was more sad and more, it was very upsetting, and you, just, you couldn't stop crying. and. It was different and there was people around me screaming, shouting and just talking to the, to him and asking for their hajats and different, different things people were asking for. And I was just standing in the middle of everything and I, I didn't ask for anything. I just stood there and felt really, really sad to be here and what he went through and everything, you know. All the Majalis and all the Messiah of Imam Hussain and Hazrat Abbas, everything just comes rushing forward and you just remember everything. And then we went to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. That was a different, different thing. Going to him, you just, you lose your words. It's just, I don't think there's any words that can describe the feeling you can ever, ever feel. When I got to Imam Hussain's Zari, I didn't want to let go and that just it just broke my heart that I had to let go and I had to move on and I remember I kept going in the line again and again again and again to get to it but I was it was less than 30 seconds and I was pulled away from it and the ache it just you just don't want to be separated from the imam I guess it's just you just want to hold on you want to clench and you just, you just grab it and stay there but no being there that time, it was the most amazing but the most heartbreaking thing ever because you just remember everything and you just remember why you're here and the, the Imam and you're he's an infallible and you're just a normal human being who's done so many sins and all your sins just come forward and you think about them and you just, they wash away with the tears and you, you think and you ask for forgiveness and you ask to be a better person. When we were going to see Imam Hussain, we had to go through Bain al Harmain to see him. And I've seen pictures of Bain al Harmain and it was it was so different to the pictures because you, you don't see the inside, you just see the outside and you just see the white path and you just see the two harams at the end of it. And it just it gives you that feeling that wow, what amazing things. It's just few few meters away from each other. After visiting the shrines of Imam Hussain and Hazrat Abbas Islam, we started going to the other companions and uh, we went to Maqam Ali Akbar and then they're quite far from the Haram. Um, you have to walk quite a bit. And I remember walking through the market and to get to the Maqam and once you get there, it's it's a tight space and you just you just there's two sides one side is going the other way and one side is going in you just you're just going and each step you take you just remember how close he was to Imam Hussein and he was what he was and he looked like the prophet and everything everything comes rushing through your mind and you just think about all the things and how important he was and how young he was because me being a 16 year old girl could relate if my older brother would sacrifice himself and for the way 
of Allah and everything. So going to that place, it just, it was really heartbreaking and a lot of sadness and I could see nobody was, you know, everybody had tears in their eyes and they just had their own du'as and whatever they wanted to say. During the walk, it was different because there were so many different peoples. There were families and there was old people, old people in wheelchairs, old people with sticks in their hand. There was people walking and just it was a different different atmosphere it was just so different and once i think i remember when we when we were walking we got to a certain point where my legs just gave out and i was really tired and i just sat on the floor and i was like i don't think i can do it anymore that was the point when i was like do you know what i can't do this anymore but then i just looked around myself and I saw children and old people going through and walking and maybe even journey. my journey was from Najaf and people, other people have come from Basra, from the Iranian border, I don't know from where they started walking and they've been walking for 16, 18 days and I've just started my walk and, I'm, and I've given up and this, this brought a hope inside of me to say that no, I have to go on, I have to reach. And it was the that moment when I was like, no, nothing matters anymore. And I just started walking. And then I got to Imam Hussein. I remember planning when I was back home, I said that I would read this, I would read so much, I would read this, I would pray this much. But once you get inside the haram, I think, it just happens automatically. You, the plan, it just it fades away and you just think about what you want to do and what you want to ask for. The emotions and the feelings inside the Zari of Imam Hussain is completely different. You're happy, but you're also sad at the same time. You're happy because you're there, but you're sad because you just, because you remember what he went through and his musibat and, everything he went through which was heartbreaking and it gets to a certain point where you, you ha your heart it hurts so much and you have the tears flowing but you're, you're also smiling because you're happy to be near the Imam and you're near there so there's so many different emotions flowing through your mind maybe you want to feel like smiling or you want to cry maybe you just want to sit there and just cry your eyes out it's the most amazing amazing experience i think anybody could ever go through being in the harm of mom saying you feel every emotion the overall journey was an amazing experience and i remember the 10 to 11 days we spent in iraq we visited different shrines and each shrine had their own own pain and own story to them. The final goodbye is when you say and you promise the Imam, for whatever I've done, I want to leave today, but I promise you I will change and I will become a better person. And when I come next time, I will try to keep that within me and be this, this change person. This all when you leave from Karbala, and you just, you know, you get in the bus or the coat or the car, whatever you're taking to go to the airport. It's the most hard, hard thing that you can ever do. I remember I went to the back of the bus and I just kept looking and looking until we were out of sight of the haram. And you just, you feel so sad because cause you can't really help feel that way. And you just want to keep going on and keep staying there, staying there. But the haram is out of sight. And that's the point when you realise, that's it now, I have to go back and I have to carry on with my life. One of the main changes I felt was that I was more patient and more, you know, more caring towards the relationships I had around me. And I was, at, I was 16 and I was just, just, I was still in that age, but I remember I was 
so much more this this you know because once you have been to karbala and you come back to wherever your life wherever you are in the world whatever you go through in your daily life is no bigger than no no pain is bigger than the imam husain's pain and that makes you live and that makes you remember yes you've been there now this change inside of you should stay there whenever you see him next time you must keep that change going so the main change i felt in myself was patience and respecting my parents my siblings and the other relations i had within me um that was something i felt truly did change in me and i would l- always be thankful for the, the ziyarat of imam hussein and whatever whatever happened and whatever i did there is always with me till day i haven't been recently last time i went was that time that was my first time and i haven't been since then and every year every muharram i remember i do prayer and just do the wa to be there again to to go back to karbala and go through the same experience that i went through it's very difficult to ever describe the feeling or the journey of karbala in one sentence you can't you can't ever say it one in one sentence but if i even if i had to say it i would say it was the most breathtaking and the most amazing experience that you can ever feel Let me hear your voice. Let me hear your voice. Let me hear your voice.